Oceanic society rests ultimately on the belief that Big Brother is omnipotent and that the party is infallible. Big Brother, Satan, the party, the Jesuit order. But since in reality Big Brother is not omnipotent and the party is not infallible, Yes, Satan is not omnipotent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. He walketh to and fro in the earth from walking up and down in it. Okay, he goeth to and fro and stuff like that. Satan is not omnipotent. Okay. There is need for an unwavering, unwearying, excuse me, for an unwearying moment to moment flexibility in the treatment of facts. The key word here is black white. Black white, all capital letters, black white. Having nothing to do with skin color too, by the way. Black white. Uh, in masonry, the black and white checkerboard looking thing is very synonymous. The yin, the yin and the yang, okay? Synonymous with Freemasonry, okay? The key word here is black white. Like so many new speak words, new speak, not news peak, okay? New speak words. This word has two mutual contradictory meanings. Now get a load of this. Apply to an opponent. It means the habit of impudently claiming that black is white. And part of the training of the Jesuit to be obedient in all things, to be obedient to go down on a sinking ship, to die under orders, is that the Jesuit is trained to believe that the white that they see is black if their provincial or their general, superior general, so tells me that it is that way. That's how the Jesuit is trained. The Jesuit is trained to see white is black and black is white because that's what their people tell them. That's what the superior general, Arturo Sosa, the head of Catholicism and the Jesuits, tells them. Okay? <clears throat> yes. Applied to an opponent, it means the habit of impudently claiming that black is white in contradiction of the plain facts. Apply to a party member, it means a loyal willing, willingness to say that black is white when party discipline demands this. Hmm. But it means also the ability to believe that black is white. And more, to know that black is white. And to forget that one has ever believed the contrary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, what's that from? That's from um, 1984. George Orwell's 1984. The purpose of Newspeak was not only to provide a medium of expression for the worldview and mental habits proper to the devotees of Insoc, but to make all other modes of thought impossible. <laughs> Newspeak. <laughs> Newspeak. Yeah. Yeah. Newspeak. Yeah. If you happen to have an authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version. Please, I invite you to open your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me and follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Please, I invite you to, to follow me along word by word, verse by verse at what we are going to be looking at today. I Please, see for yourself See for yourself what I'm telling you. See for yourself what the scriptures 
are saying, not me, because I'm going to be reading you from the scriptures. I'm going to be giving you facts today. Facts which Satan wants to blur. What is a man? What is a woman? The very simple answers. But see, today, today, with the people that are so wicked, so depraved, so far gone from the truth, so God-hating, Satan is able to work in the questioning of black and white facts. What is a man? What is a woman? And see, this transgender debate, it's not even a debate. It's a bunch of wicked, perverted sinners seeking to justify themselves and calling evil good and good evil. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it's interesting, too, because in looking into this, and, and I did. I, I spent a little bit, of, actually quite a bit of time watching videos uh, on this. It's interesting. It's interesting because you see guys like uh, David Shapiro, or excuse me, Ben Shapiro, okay? Ben Shapiro, who's speaking rightly about the transgender thing that, you know, that a man who decides to become a woman we are supposed to call that person a woman when they're actually a man. And then they get all upset that the, the, with the pronouns, it's like, I am non-binary or whatever, and I identify as a woman even though I'm a man. And a woman wants to be identified as a man. And they attack the pronoun. They attack the black and white truth what a man is and what a woman is. And unfortunately, in looking this up, men can have parts of them removed and fashioned and certain things fashioned to resemble that of a woman. But when you also look into um, a woman looking to have parts of a man transplanted, it doesn't really work. It doesn't really work, okay? There are apparently some chemical things that could be done, but still, see, when you start messing with your gender, when you start messing with your gender, okay, it is the ultimate smack in God's face. Because what you are saying is, God who created all things perfect. But when you say, well, I was born a woman, but I'm a man. You're calling God a liar. You're saying that God didn't make you the way he intended you to be made. Well, I don't believe what you believe, Brad. That's, that's your problem. It doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus Christ or the scriptures. It doesn't matter because at your end, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ. And the word that you reject is going to judge you. So it really doesn't matter if you want to reject this truth or not. This truth is going to judge you. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? And you look, you look into this, and you got these uh, atheist devils like Ben Shapiro. Okay? Uh, Jordan Peterson, the modern equivalent to a manly Palmer Hall. That guy's wicked. Okay? And this what, Matt or Brian Walsh guy with the beard? Um, and uh, even some women out there are rightly saying like, okay, you want to identify as a man, 
but you're a woman. You want to identify as a woman, uh, but you're a man. And you attack, well, what is a man? What is a woman? Mm -hmm. And what they seek to do is they seek to question actual truth. And what's more truer than you're born a man or you're born a woman? But see, yea hath God said. Yea hath God, yea hath God said. Now, <laughs> First Timothy chapter 6, verse 4, verse 3 and 4. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Strife of words. That man and woman don't mean actual biologically man and woman. That the fact, the black and white truth that you are a man or that you are a woman uh, doesn't matter. They're, they're blurry. They're fuzzy. At the end of the day, when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the great white throne of judgment, um, you're going to stand before him as man or woman. I'm a man. And I can't say, well, I identify as a Ford F-150. Uh, but you're a man. Yeah, but see, you're supposed to identify me and call me a Ford F-150. Well, that doesn't make you, it doesn't make you one. Bingo! But see, through chemical and surgery, uh, people can, men can have things removed, they can have breast implants, women can have their breasts removed, and there have been attempts, this is, this is perverse, but there has been attempts, and you can look this up for yourself, to take something that pertains unto a man, the male member, and try to transplant it onto a woman. You can try to deny what the facts are, the truth is. But see, dear friend, you're going to die one day. And whether you want to believe this or not, or accept it or not, you are going to give an account of yourself to the one whose face you spit in, our Lord Jesus Christ God, my Father. Okay? You're going to give an account to him. And you're going to give an account to him as a man or a woman. It doesn't matter what you want to identify yourself as. Okay? This is, this is ludicrous. This is insanity. And see, the thing on pronouns, the thing on pronouns, they attack the words. Words have meaning. Words are important. But as we, uh, uh, the quote from 1984, Satan and his uh, army, the Jesuit order, have changed the meaning of words with euphemistic language. Change the name of the condition, you change the condition. But that's not possible. Okay? And euphemistic language is rife in our society today. Okay? And a lot of it also has to do with sodomy, okay? I've run into people who, you know, who are sodomites, but they say, well, I'm not gay. Gay means happy, by the way. The world has perverted that meaning. But I'm not gay. I'm not a homosexual. Uh, but you're mating with a man. But I'm not a homosexual. The scripture says that you're a sodomite, okay? That's a fact. Or two women get with each other and they say, well, I'm not a lesbian. But you're lying with a woman. Yeah, but I'm not a lesbian. Uh, the scriptures call you a sodomite. That's a fact. That's a fact. And whether or not you're a man 
who is, try, is dating someone who is a man dressed as a woman, okay? Uh, a man who has breasts or even had the surgery, but still they still have that Adam's apple, don't they? Don't they? Yeah. Yeah. No matter what they've done to their own body, they are still a man. They are still a man. Or they are still a woman. And Satan knows, Satan knows that that's not going to succeed. He knows. You know, for those of you, my countrymen here in America, you remember that ridiculous toilet paper famine when the psychological operation that the Jesuits began started? You remember that? They did that test run where the Jesuits were rolling on the floor, laughing hysterically at how stupid people were. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Well, it shows that man is willing to believe anything, especially since we have departed, as mankind has departed so far from the Lord. So when you got these devils seeking to question fact, such as they are a man or a woman, It's no surprise. But we're going to go through facts. We're going to go through facts. And as the channel name is, Accountable KJV, I'm going to provide you facts from Scripture. It, it, listen to me. It doesn't matter if you want to believe this or not, dear friend. Like I said, you're going to die one day. And you are going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account for yourself. And this very word that you reject is what's going to judge you. You got to deal with truth. If not, truth is going to deal with you. So, turn with me. Please. Please. I'm going to partake, Lord willing, to do with guys like the brilliant Ben Shapiro or the even more brilliant um, uh, Jordan Peterson or that Walsh guy. What does God say? What does God say? Genesis, that means the beginning. Follow me along, please. And if you don't, then listen. Then listen. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26 and 27. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now see, if you get like an NIV or the New Revised Standard Version, which is really bad, they're all horrible. This is the scriptures, okay? Some will say, and God created human beings in his own image. Gender neutral. Gender neutral. That's why you need the authorized version of the scriptures. You read in an NIV, uh, what is it, 1 Timothy chapter 3, about a bishop, you'll see that the gender neutral thing that they do, trying to justify a woman preacher or pastor. And scripture forbids that. Okay? But see, the scripture... The King James Version, not a Bible. Okay, even though this says Holy Bible, by the way, the scripture, the pages, the words themselves never refer to themselves as the Bible. Okay? They don't. All right? See, there are those out there who you'll, you'll scroll down and you'll see videos coming from basically two people, two losers. Okay? But, You'll see that people like, well, Brad, you make a, 
strife about words yourself about Christian and Bible. Uh, in the scriptures, it never refers to itself about as a Bible. And the word Christian is a worldly term that we who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, never labeled ourselves as, okay? There is a prophet in returning to scriptural words and terminology, okay? Words to no prophet, by the way, I have to say this, are words spoken that are contrary to the doctrine relative to our salvation within this dispensation. Example. Someone comes along saying to you that in order to be saved, stay saved and be right with God, today in this dispensation, you have to keep the law. Those are words to no profit for your salvation, okay? Those are words to no profit, okay? Those are words to no profit. It is a profit to return onto scriptural terminology the best we can, okay? But, okay, I had to say that. But verse 27, again, so God created man, mankind, mankind, not humankind, okay? Go ahead and look up what Mr. Pal uh, about in, uh, the secret teaching of all things by Manly Palmer Hall, okay? What the God Hugh is, you know, the aliens that so many of you like, the way they look, that's basically what Hugh was like, and that's something, yeah, but. Uh, you don't want to be a Hugh man, the God Hugh. You don't want to be that. But like I said, you look in a Bible, a lot of them will change. So God created human beings in his own image. It's mankind. Like we just, like we did in the beginning of this video with news speak. Okay. So God created man, mankind in his own image, his own image. We have a spirit. We have a soul, we have a body. Spirit, soul, and body. We're all, even you, even you are created in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body, okay? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God create, created he him, him. Male and female created he them. And you, transgender, you, sodomite, whatever. Well, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Man doesn't mean man. Woman doesn't mean woman. Like you say, you're going to have to give an account to God. Okay? You're going to have to give an account to God. You can go on living your life in a lie like you're doing and deceiving yourself and deceiving others. But at your end, dear friend, you're going to give an account to God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this, like I said, this very word that you reject is what is going to judge you. The basis of your judgment is going to be the scripture. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. Let me get a couple of you uh, uh, transgender sodomite feminazis out there angry. So... God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female. Okay? Black, white. Male and female. Okay? God doesn't make mistakes. You start messing with your gender. It's the ultimate smack spit in the face of God. You are saying that God didn't make you perfectly. Okay? Okay? Meaning, according to his desire. According as man and woman. Okay? You're saying God made a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. Okay? He doesn't. There are no oopsies. Okay? Now, Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on verse 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Okay? And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. 
but for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And incidentally, you sick, disgusting perverts, this does not mean that Adam was having physical relations with animals. The Lord rebuke you. It's not what that's talking about. Okay? That's disgusting. But see, to justify your sin, people will say, Yea, hath God said. Okay? And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her on to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. What does woman mean? Because she was taken out of man. That's what woman means. Woman was made to be a helpmeet for the man, not the man to be a helpmeet for the woman. And when you start looking into this transgender debate and this uh, transgender pronoun debate thing, a majority of them are women that are for this or men who want to be women. It's feminine. It's feminine. Okay? It's feminine. Feminism is cancer, by the way. And there is nothing wrong, dear woman. That is God's glorious purpose for you. To be a helpmeet for the man. See that you're writhing now in anger, aren't you? Yeah. It's not sexism. That's the way God designed it. That's the way God designed you. And you can reject that and, and uh, spit and splatter and go all day, all night. And you have your time right now. Yes, you do. But you're going to give an account. And if you're watching this, you are being warned of the facts. Okay? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, in the beginning he created them male and female. Simple. Male and female. Okay? Man, woman. And woman was made for man, not man for the woman. The word woman means because she was taken out of man. Of man. Taken out of man. Woman. That's what that means. Praise the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. But. But. Now the serpent, Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And you look across the page in uh, verse 17, Yes, God said, Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He never said, Don't touch it. He said, Don't eat of it. Okay? You go ahead and you continue reading in Genesis chapter 3, Eve Satan goes to Eve, okay? Satan, uh, the serpent, that was Satan, okay? Serpent goes to Eve with his, yea, hath God said. All right? And she said, well, yeah, God said that we can eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the garden of the fruit, of the tree of the garden of the knowledge of good and evil, we will not eat of it. And she adds to it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay? God never said not to touch it. He said, don't eat, eat of it. And then Satan comes along and says in verses 4 and 5, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, only God truly knows what is truly good and truly evil. 
Satan came along and said, Yea, hath God said. Question what God had said. And then lied. Okay? Said, Ye shall not surely die. And of course, when he said that, they were thinking that if they ate of it, that they would drop dead immediately. And it didn't happen that way, did it? It took a thousand, like a long time, almost a thousand years for Adam to die. But eventually he died. Okay? Not right away. But he did die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can claim to know what is good and what is evil, according to your own dictate, because you disobeyed what God says. Your eyes will be open. That's what Satan offers you. Disobey what God says, and you'll have eyes to see. Okay? And about Satan, the one who you serve, the one who is lying to you, the one who you have given yourself by your own choice over to. Uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Now, in context, this has to do with that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, which some of you people, uh, you transgender, are going to see uh, after the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, gets redeemed, and you guys go through the time of Jacob's trouble. That man of sin, the son of perdition, the world leader that you're all looking for, who doesn't judge you, who doesn't have a problem with transgenderism and all that kind of nonsense, okay? That's who you're looking for. But uh, in context... What were this verse in uh, Daniel chapter 20, uh, 7, verse 25, in context, it's talking about what that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to do during that time of Jacob's trouble. But we're looking at it for this purpose about what we looked at in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, about striving about words. Verse 25, And he shall speak, speak great words against the Most High, yea, hath God said, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until the time, until a time, and times, and the dividing of time. Now this has everything to do with the time of Jacob's trouble, when that man of sin, the son of perdition, walks into the third temple, claiming to be God, and having the visage looking like, as I believe, thank you brother, as the Roman Catholic Jesus, very effeminate in his face, the visage looking like, probably not having the long hair, but his vis visage is going to resemble, I believe, the Roman Catholic Jesus. But he's going to change times and laws because the law is going to be around during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Long story, other videos we I got talking about that, but change times and laws is what we're, why we looked at this. Change times and laws. Euphemistic language. Changing words, what they mean to soften them, to change the name of the condition, to hopefully change the condition, to soften things up. Euphemistic language. <clears throat> it's a ploy of Satan. Like we looked at you know, what newspeak is. Okay? That's what's happening today with this gender thing. And Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. Okay? Change. Change times and laws. Okay? Proverbs chapter 5. Just one verse. Proverbs chapter 5. Verse 6. Okay? Proverbs chapter 5. Verse 6. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Always changing, moment to moment, and her ways. Who is to her? Revelation chapter 17, verse 8, I believe that is. Or uh, Revelation chapter 17. Let's go there really quickly. Revelation chapter 17. Who is this her that that's talking about? Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Double-minded, unstable, 
always changing. Like some of my enemies who change their channel's names every other day to avoid detection. But yet, they want to be known. It's crazy. But they're always changing. Never stable. The thing that is constant is that they are changing. That's the constant thing. Okay? They say the Roman Catholic Church never changes. Uh, she gets worse. But what doesn't change is the fact that she changes. See? See? She gets worse over time. And Mystery Babylon the Great, which is Roman Catholicism, is pure evil. Okay? And that's Satan's church. That's Satan's religion. That's what you are. You're a Satanist. You've believed the lie of the devil, dear friend. And you got to remember this about our Lord Jesus Christ. Go to Malachi chapter 3, just one verse. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, one verse. Verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You might be saying, well, God changes. What changes is how God deals with man within the dispensation. Okay? That's what changes. If you don't know what a dispensation is, there will be a video in the description box about rightly dividing. Okay? Go ahead and watch that if you have any questions. Okay? What changes is how God deals with man. God himself does not change. But the way he deals with mankind, that is what changes. And in Hebrews chapter 13, one, one verse. Hebrews chapter 13, one verse. Verse 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. God doesn't change. Satan, his ways are movable. Okay? That thou canst not know them. It says her ways are movable. Satan's church. Hence, Satan is ever-changing. Okay? Ever-changing. Going with the flow. Okay? He seeks to uh, change times and laws. Okay? Well, God himself doesn't change. What changes is how he deals with man. That's what changes. That's it. God himself, he is good. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. He does the changing in you. Okay? He changes lives. Yes, he does. But God doesn't change. Male is male. Female is female. Okay? And also to, all right, also to Revelation chapter 13, that old serpent, okay? Revelation chapter 13, that old serpent, a serpent who moves on the ground like that, who slithers. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, okay? Dragon speak, new speak. The serpent, that old devil, Satan, uh, on that, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And that great de dragon was cast out, that old serpent, the one that we looked at in Genesis chapter 3, okay, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were with him, okay? And what did he do? He came in up saying... Yea, hath God said. New speak. Dragons speak. How do dragons speak? How do devils speak? You have, you have been told by Hollywood that devils speak in profanity, and they do. And that they speak in harshness, and they do. But you got to remember, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Those Satanists that... Uh, live in profanity and where the you know like Glenn Benton and do cat sacrifices and gothic black and white makeup. That's that's distraction. True Luciferianism, true Satanism is the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, that other stuff is just a distraction. So knowing that, how does a devil? How does a dragon speak? 
Revelation chapter 13, verse 9, uh, verse uh, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Spake as a dragon. And how does a dragon speak? How does a dragon speak? Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. We want verses 9 on to verse 13. Isaiah chapter 30. How does a dragon speak? For the most part. You get a dragon mad enough, a devil mad enough, you know, just slightly scratch him. And they got enough booze and cigarettes going through them, uh, they'll, that facade will come down and they'll start speaking as they truly are. But how does a devil speak? How does a dragon speak? Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 on to verse 13. Thus, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, would say to the seers, See not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly and at an instant going to give an account one day, dear friend. doesn't matter if you want to believe that or not. That's what's going to happen. You're going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. And since you despise this word, it's this word that he has written for us that is going to judge you. This is the principle on which you are going to be judged. You can deny it all you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You call God a liar by what he made you, a man or a woman? You call him a liar by messing with your gender and then seeking to twist the truth of God's word that he made the, made the male and female and seek to twist that? That's, that's Satan. That's what Satan. And see the smooth things. The people want to hear smooth things. So the devil who is transformed as an angel of light, and they'll marvel also that his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. And right away you think about the Christians in the church buildings, okay? And you're, you're right, they're ministers of, of righteousness. Okay, they're of Satan himself. But your ministers of righteousness are the Jesuit trained doctors, your activists, your feminazi activists. I saw the one that that Walsh guy was talking to this feminazi crazy lady who was so yea hath God said, so um, subjective, so teaching relativism that I'm surprised. And I'll give that guy credit. He kept it going for as long as he could. But even he was like, boy, trying to... And see... Unfortunately, so many of you have made your choice to serve Satan. So many of you have crossed that line of no return. That trying to talk to some of you is vanity of vanity. We might as well pisseth against the wind. But see, that's not the case for all of you. And that's who I wish to, I, I, Lord willing, that's who I hope We'll see this, okay? See, a devil, you want to hear evil. You want to hear lies. 
So the devil is going to oblige you and give you someone who speaks smoothly, who speaks quietly, who appears to never get upset at anything, who always speaks with a righteous, righteous words and is so calm until you scratch them and then they're... A dragon speaks smoothly, softly, Never with harsh words while the camera rolls. Never, never, no, no. And Second Timothy, chapter four. Second Timothy, chapter four, verses three and four. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. Satan gives you what you want. The Lord will give you what you need. Satan will give you what you want. There are, those are two very different things, dear friend. You need to repent of yourself. You need to repent and come to the Lord broken because it's your fault that he died. And fear him because he can send you to hell. And call upon his name. And Lord willing, he save you. But see, Satan like, hey, you want this evil? I'll give it to you. Fall down and worship me. All will be thine. Okay? A devil, a dragon, speaks smoothly. All right? Now, what is a man? What is a man? That, that's the question. What say at the scriptures? Very simple here. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. What is a man? Job chapter 38. I'm going to look at scripture verses which talk about what a man is. Okay? Job 38 verses 1 on to verse 3. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel with words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Loins. Loins. Hmm? First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 16. One verse. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Okay. <clears throat> Paul speaking. Watch ye. Stand fast, fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Be strong. Men are supposed to be strong. See, women are the weaker vessel where they were made to be that way, to be a help meet unto the man who is to be strong. Okay? In the description box, what is a godly woman? What does God expect of a woman? Okay? That'll be in the description box for you. Okay? But we as men, we're supposed to be strong. Not that women can't be strong, but we are the ones that are supposed to be doing the battle. We are the ones who are supposed to be fighting for truth in the uh, preaching. And uh, women... You live a godly life according to scripture, yes, but you are not supposed to usurp authority over a man. Okay? You are sub to be submissive unto your husbands. If you have no husband, you are to sub be submissive unto your spiritual head. Your spiritual head is Christ. Yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But there ought to be a man that you can go to with questions and stuff like that. Like I say, we talk about that in the videos of uh, a woman of God. Check those out if you have any questions about that, okay? All right? And also now go to Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38. Okay, what is a man? Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38. We want verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived. 
she conceived, okay, and bare a son, and he called his name Er. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived, and bare a son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at Kizim when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar, Ur, Er. Okay? And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Okay? This, this is a bio, biology lesson as well, okay? Are you getting this? Okay? And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilt it on the ground, lest he, that he should give seed to his brother, raise up his brother's name, Okay? And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So, what do we see so far about what a man is? Man has loins, okay? He is to be strong. He is to be uh, somewhat confrontational, if you will. One second, please. Yes, it's man that is supposed to be doing the warring. It is man that's supposed to be doing the, the physical standing, while woman, the nurturing, the guiding of the home, the building up of the home, being a helpmeet for the man, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But see, when you mess with the order of things, this is what happens. This is what happens. It's against, it's against nature itself which God has created, okay? A man has seed, and the woman gives birth. You know, what? The, there's a, a diagram of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's a diagram of the matrix, the reproductive system of the woman with the eggs and, the, and whatnot, okay? That's what the diagram of the Trinity is. The Trinity is a satanic sex symbol. That uh, uh, thing that you see, the diagram, the Trinity is perverse, by the way. God is one God made of spirit, soul, and body, just like we are. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that wake, make one God. That's lunacy, that's insanity. But never mind that, okay? Man cannot create life in himself. Woman can. Okay? That's why we looked at this. The seed. The seed to give onto the flower, the egg. Okay? All right? Man has the ability to do that. Man has, big pardon, man has a phallus. Women have ovaries, eggs, in order to bear children. Okay? Biological. This, like I said, Genesis chapter 38, verses 1 on to verse 10, it was, a bio it was a biology lesson for you. Okay? All right? That's what makes a man. Okay? Now, there, you know, there are these, these weird men out there who act effeminate, okay? But nonetheless, they are still a man. Okay? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. After the fall, they ate of the tree, their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked. Okay? They knew that sin was brought in because they disobeyed what God had said. And Genesis chapter 3, verses 15 on to verse 16. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, talking uh, to Satan, and between thy seed and her seed. 
that you will bear. Talk. This is right here, verse 15, is a prophecy of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. Okay, this is the very first uh, reference unto him. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now see, before the fall, man, Adam, was still the head of the wife. But it was a different dynamic because there was no sin involved. Once sin gets involved... And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Man is the head of the wife. Your problem is with God. And that God that you have a problem with, and you reject, you're going to give an account to. You can't deny, I mean, you can, you can, you sodomite men who want to be women, well, I'm not gay. I was born a man, but I'm actually a woman. No, you are not. There's no such thing. You make choices. You make a choice. You're not born gay. You're not a man born in a woman's body. You're not a woman born in a man's body. Yea, hath God said. That's a lie. You're born man or woman. Black or white. No, yea, hath God said. You, man, can decide to have it chopped off and take all the drugs that you want to change your voice, to try to diminish the Adam's apple, to grow bosom at the great white throne of judgment. You're not going to stand before him as the mangled mutant that you've made yourself. You're going to stand before him as a man or as a woman. Okay? The devil has deceived you. And you have chosen, you have chosen to do such. You're not held at gunpoint. You made choices. And you can choose onto a point where you go to a point where you cross a line of no return. And when you go as far as removing your genitalia, The odds on you, truly coming to the Lord broken, contrite, and having fear of him, are very slim. Is it impossible? No. No, it is not impossible. But the, the odds are stacked against you because of your choices. Doesn't mean that the Lord can't save you. But you, you've made it even harder for yourself. Now, Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, just one verse. 1 Timothy chapter 5. This is not that in-depth because it doesn't need to be. It's a simple thing. Man or woman, he made them male or female. What you choose to do to yourself doesn't change what God made you. Okay? Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 5, just one verse. Verse 14, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Yes. See, man has the seed to fertilize the egg, and the woman is to bear children. Okay? Man is the one that's to go out and make the living. It's man that is to uh, do the warfare. Okay, the woman is to be the keeper at home, to bring up the children. Uh, God has no problem with a woman having an income. My wife, she crochets. She, she's going to start selling all her multitude of scarves and blankets and stuff like that. Okay, God's not against a woman having an income. But putting on things that pertain to a man, taking on the responsibilities of a man, God does not approve of. And I understand certain circumstances 
of today because of of what Satan has done, what you have wanted to, Satan to do unto you because you have rejected this. Now there are single mothers out there who have no choice but to go work. Why? Yea, hath God said. You're part of the problem, dear friend. You're part of it. You're part of that satanic thing that's going on. It doesn't have to be that way. But see, the man has to seed. The woman is to bear children, to be a keeper at home. Woman of man, taken out of man, was made for Adam, not vice versa. And see, you mess with that, look at America. Look at America. Look at America. Okay? And Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 5. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, Chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. When you see a woman preacher, the word of God is being blasphemed. In the authorized version of the scriptures, you check out 1 Timothy chapter 3, and then you compare that with an uh, NIV, NASV, or the New Revised Standard Version. The Bibles which are catered to the gender-neutral thing. The authorized version of the scripture is black and white. Interesting that Orson Welles wrote about getting away with, uh, doing away with uh, old words and creating new speak. Okay? But the woman is to be the keeper of home, at home. Okay? Man has a phallus. Beg your pardon. Okay, man, men out there have chosen to take hormone drugs, get implants, okay, and to have it locked off. It still doesn't change who God made you. And you are spitting in the face of God when you mess with your gender like that. You are spitting in God's face. Is it impossible for you to get saved? I don't believe so. But there again, if you've gone that far, the odds on you going past the point of no return is quite prevalent. Uh, there are some that I've seen, some interviews that some of these guys, that Walsh guy did about this one woman who said, I'm a biological woman, sounded like a man, looked like a man, who had remorse, but looked like a man because of the choices that she made it was irreversible, but yet she had remorse. She had sorrow. That was hopeful to see because, hey, if that Walsh guy wasn't so busy about promoting ev evolution theology and that man is this great thing, he could have said to this woman, Jesus Christ can forgive you. And see, these guys like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, who is a Christian apparently, and that Walsh guy, they omit Christ. They just say to state the obvious black and white about the biological fact, the scriptural fact that man is man and woman is woman, but they omit Jesus Christ. That one video I saw about that Walsh guy talking to that woman who looked like a man, balding like a man. It's like, I'm a biological woman. Look like, sound like, it's like, wow. I, yeah, of course, had, like I do, a double chin. Couldn't really see the Adam's apple, okay? Because it, it's a she. 
But see, that woman was in a repentant state. It was possible for her to come to Christ, even after all she had done. But no, that Walsh guy didn't present to her, oh, Jesus Christ, no. The wisdom of men. See, and that's what makes people like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, and that Walsh guy, and others who use man's wisdom, who state Captain Obvious, that's what makes them dangerous. When you come across one of these transgender people who go that far and have it removed or have them removed and mess with their biological system with the poison pharmacaea, but yet they have remorse and regret and are broken. That's when someone of the church of the living God ought to be there. Because if there's a possibility for such a one to come to Christ broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name, that's the time not to preach to them man's wisdom. Okay? No. No. Now go to Exodus chapter 13. I'm not against you, by the way. I'm just telling you fact. I want you to repent. I want you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a broken, contrite sinner and fear him because he's going to send you to hell you don't repent. Doesn't matter if you want to reject this word. You want, it doesn't matter. You're going to give an account to him. You better start taking that seriously. Satan has lied to you. Okay? Now, Gen uh, Exodus chapter 13, verse 12. Okay, so a man has a phallus. Doesn't matter if you removed it, you're still made as a man. But what about a woman? Exodus chapter 13, verse 12. That, okay, let's read 11 and 12. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, and not that stupid movie, okay? And every firstling that cometh of a beast, which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. The matrix. What is the matrix? Look at a diagram for the Trinity. That's what, the diagram of the Trinity is basically the reproductive system of the woman with the eggs and the thing. Okay? That's the matrix. Open at the matrix. Okay? That's what a woman has that a man doesn't. That's the one thing that you women who want, why? Who want to become men, that's the one thing. You can, you can have your surgeries, remove your eggs. Okay? There, there were, uh, there have been attempts to take male phallus and try to there have you can look that up okay there have not been any actual successful things of that it's the fact that i'm speaking about this shows the depravity of how man is today and you don't think that the end is near okay but a woman has a matrix okay and you men who want to be a woman, you can't. It's biologically impossible. And you want me to call you a woman when you're a biological man? Sorry. Uh, if you Now, I've seen transgenders, like in Chicago. I've seen some that have actually fooled me. It's like, wow. As a lost man, there was a, a point where oh, you don't need to know. But as a lost man, I didn't know. Okay? I didn't know. There are some men out there. Even this, this Sports Illustrated uh, did a cover thing with a transgender who was a guy. He looked like a woman. But still, couldn't get rid of that totally. Okay? If you fool me, shame on you. But if I know you're a woman... 
and you're there acting like, and you're you look like a man. I'm sorry, I don't care if it's rude. Okay, I don't care if you want to identify as a man. You're a woman. Okay. I'm not going to give you that. Because God made you a woman. I'm not going to deny what God made you, even though you want to do it yourself. Okay? And you call that evil. Okay? And while we're in Exodus chapter 13, verse 15, again. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would, Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the, both the firstborn of man, mankind, and the firstborn of beasts. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Matrix is with the female. Okay? All right? And Numbers, Numbers chapter 3, Numbers chapter 3, just one verse. Numbers chapter 3, again, we're looking at this thing of the matrix. Uh, the matrix is uh, the re female reproductive uh, uh, system and whatnot. Uh, Numbers chapter 3, verse 12. Numbers chapter 3, verse 12. And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. Okay? The matrix. The female reproductive system, uh, organs. The eggs. The canal. and Okay? And like I said, the satanic pagan, wicked, vile trinity symbol diagram is fashioned after the matrix. Okay? But see, that's what a woman has. You can have your surgeries. You can take your drugs. It's not going to change you permanently, actually. You can, you can kind of skim some, sorry with every pun intended, you can uh, skim some off the top. But a judgment, dear friend, you're going to stand before the Lord as he made you, male and female. What can I say? You're going to die a transgender, but you're going to be judged as a, the man or woman that God made you. Because the Lord doesn't see as we see. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 10. Just one verse. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. One verse. Verse 15. And this is what, unfortunately, you transgender people do. And this is the evil of what you do. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 15. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood? It's the ultimate contempt for God, for you, you transgender individual, for you to alter your gender. It's the ultimate offense to God. God made you male or female. And then for you to go along and say, well, no, I'm a woman in a man's body. You, you, you're, you're calling God a liar. You're showing contempt for what God made. Like I said, personally, personally, I don't believe that that in and of itself means that you can't get saved. But there is a line that people will cross where they go so far that they can't come back because of their choices they've made. Okay? Like I said, that one, I can't find it. I can't find it. But that one that I saw um, with that Walsh guy talking to that woman who looked like a man, that woman was broken. If that Walsh guy would have preached the gospel to that woman, maybe she would have gotten saved. 
okay? But these ones that go through uh, through the streets with the flags and the uh, pride flags. When you start doing that to your, when you start questioning your gender, when you start doing that to yourself, it doesn't look good for you. Okay, and uh, of course, Isaiah chapter 64, Isaiah chapter 64. See, like I said, I, I wish I could find that again. Because that woman who looked like a guy, who looked like a man, talking to that Walsh guy, you could hear in her voice, she sounded like a guy, okay? Like a man, excuse me. There was brokenness there. She needed to hear the truth of the gospel. But what was Walsh doing? Just looking at her with a disgust and a pity. But Genesis, uh, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 on to verse 8. See, this is what your heart ought to be as. For those of you who haven't gone that far, for those of you who are in between, consider these things. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, as we, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, and thou art potter, and we are, and we all are the work of thy hand. And you're not going to get away from that, dear friend. He made you. He made you male or female. There's no middle ground. There's no non-binary. There's no Z or whatever it is. That thumbnail you're going to see. Oh, those people, that's from that, that couple so-called was on Dr. Phil. Those, those people are gone. Those, those people, the, the thumbnail, those people, they're gone. They're, they're gone. There's no hope for those. There's no hope for those. There isn't. For that woman or man. And you can't tell. The woman that has the muscle and touchy and the beard, that's obviously a woman. The other one, woof. okay? <laughs> I, but then again, you can't tell. It's, I mean, it's confusion. It's It's confusion. Okay? See, that's what that is. Okay? That's what that is. It's confusion. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 14. God is not the author of confusion. Okay? He is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Okay? God is not the author of confusion. Okay? And when you read in James chapter 3, verse 16, okay? James 3, verse 16, okay? James 3, verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Well, you're a man, but you want to be a woman. Why? You're envious, and that brings strife and every a confusion and every evil work. See, that's all this is. The gender thing is blatant confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, dear friend. Okay? He is not. Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 10. God created you male or female. And no matter what you do to yourself, it's not going to change what God made you. Like I said, you're going to die a transgender mess. You're going to stand before the Lord as he made you male or female. You can't change that. You can't. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 and verse 10. 
the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, and seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced, turn, repent from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that if that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. It doesn't matter if you want to believe this or not. Jesus Christ made you. He made you male or female. And all the drugs and surgeries you can do is not going to change that truth. It's not. It's not. It's not. And Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. Romans chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You bought into Satan's lie. You know what is good and evil. It's good for you to change how God made you from man to woman, from woman to man. You are your own God. Don't say you're an atheist because the God that you worship is yourself. Just like Satan, your father. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? And that's what so many of you transgender people do. You're saying, you made a mistake, I'm supposed to be a woman, but I'm in a man's body. Or, I'm supposed to be a man, I'm in a woman's body. What? No. God doesn't make mistakes. He made you male or female. There, there is no... Uh. You dear, dear person. You've bought into the lie of Satan and you've swallowed it down hook, line, and sinker. And for so many of you, because of the witchcraft pharmacia that some of you have taken and your surgeries, a lot of you have gone past that point of no return. But not all of you. Even those of you who might have gone through those surgeries and stopped taking those Drugs, that, that, that witchcraft, pharmacia, sorcery, that just destroys your body. There still may be hope for some of you. Verse 21, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump, meaning of mankind, to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Okay? And that's not talking about, you know, that the woman is to be dishonored or the man. No, okay, that's talking about a different thing. But the point is, God is the one who made you. It doesn't matter if you want to believe that or not, dear friend. When you die and you're going to die, you're going to give an account. And the Lord who made you, it's not going to look at you. It's not going. To, he, you might, you might, you might stand before him all with all your mutated stuff that you did to yourself. But God is not going to uh, address you and judge you as you want to be called. He made you male or female, and that's what he's going to judge you as, male or female. Okay. 
And of course, uh, just a quick reference here in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 36. Okay. <laughs> you can't change what God made you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 36. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. And I've run into this. It's like, I can dye my hair any color. But yes, at the genetic level, you cannot change the root in the biological whatever. You cannot change that so that it by itself grows white or black. You might say, well, yeah, I can with the injections. doesn't matter what you do, what kind of drugs you take, what kind of surgeries you go through. You're not going to change the fact that God made you male or female, dear friend. A male has the seed to give on to the woman and to give birth uh, that, you know, with the matrix and whatnot. Man has a phallus. Man is built differently with on the inside. A woman as the matrix, give birth to children, okay? And you can try to alter that with pharmacia or surgery, but at the end of the day, at judgment, which you're not thinking about, you're going to stand before him male or female as he created you. And you're going to go to hell. And you're going to burn forever, dear friend. It doesn't have to be that way. But like I said, if you've gone past that point of no return, like those people in the um, in the thumbnail, a lot of you have gone past that point of no return. Not all of you. Not all of you. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse, just one verse, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, one verse, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, you know, you see Monte Python dressing up as a woman. That's an abomination in the sight of God. But also, the man taking on the role of the woman and the woman taking on the role of the man, it's confusion. Okay? It's a little bit more deeper than just articles of clothing. Okay? God made man, mankind, the way he made it. God, man, woman, children. Feminism. God, woman, children, pet, man. Okay? And again, all that you can do isn't going to change that fact for you at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, excuse me, at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? Not at the judgment seat of Christ. That's where we the saved go. Okay? But that's not going to change anything for you. You're going to be judged as male or female. Okay? And 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate men that act like women nor abusers of themselves with mankind, sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God, referring unto the spiritual. Like I said, I saw that video with that Walsh guy talking to that transgender woman who looked and sounded like a guy, balding like a guy, who was broken, who needed to hear the gospel. And there was a chance maybe that that woman could have repented and actually gotten saved. 
But no, he preached the, women, uh, the wisdom of men. You start messing with your gender, you start messing around in that type of area, dear friend, the odds are stacked against you. The odds are stacked against you. Ultimately, this is what you need to consider in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 27. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness that you're born male or female. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. You're made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. Okay? You look at the trees, the leaves, the biology of an eye. It's not by evolution. It's created. Okay? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Again, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? Because that, when they knew God, just here, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful. Thank you, Lord. You made me a man. My wife would say, Thank you, Lord. You made me a woman. But you show ultimate, one of the most ultimate forms of contempt for God and His creation when you, as a man, say, I was born a woman, but I'm in a man's body. Or I was born a man, and I'm in a woman's body. That's the ultimate contempt. One of the most, if not the most, ultimate contempt for God's creation. It really is. Okay? Professing themselves to be what? Okay, let's, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. The fool. What is a fool? Watch the video uh, in the description box. The one that was before this one. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. You cannot corrupt the image of God, meaning spirit, soul, and body. Oh, you try with your injections, your pills, and your surgeries. Oh, dear man, dear woman. God help you. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And hold your place there and go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 under verse 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong, uh, verses 10 under verse 12, excuse me. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. It's not a righteous thing that you're doing, messing with your gender. Okay? Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie. You're born male or female. You mess with that, you're changing the truth of God into a lie. And worshiped and served the creature like Satan, a created being, being or worshiping yourself like Satan did. You worship yourself, you're a Satanist. Okay? Okay? who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. 
For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. There's for you lesbians. I ran into a lesbian sodomite one day who knew what the scripture said about how man shall not lay with mankind. And she arrogantly and smugly said to me, it says man shall not lay with mankind. It says nothing again about women laying with women. And when I heard that, I, I, that, I was not expecting that. It's like, wow. Of course, the Lord is like regrouped a little bit and went on from there. But yeah, a female sodomite said that to me. Who looked like a man. Okay. I still remember her name. But yeah, you, you can't get away from it. Being with the same sex is sodomy. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I lay with a man, but I'm not, I'm not a sodomite. Yes, you are. I'm not attracted to men. You're laying with a man. You're a sodomite. Okay. Get over yourself. You're, you're a woman. Well, I'm not, I'm not a lesbian. I'm not attracted to other women, but you're laying with a woman. You're a sodomite. Okay. Get over it. Repent of it. Okay. It doesn't matter what kind of euphemistic word candy you employ. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Now some will come and go to the Calvinistic uh, based doctrine of the reprobate doctrine. That once God gives someone over to a reprobate mind that they are unreachable. No, no. No, there is a point when someone goes across a line that can't come back by their own choice. But see, the reprobate doctrine says that God makes it impossible for that man to, or woman to get saved. No, the Lord can save any man, woman, child. Yes, but he doesn't do it at gunpoint. It's you that makes the choice and goes past the point of no return. Okay? Okay. And once you go past that point, God's like, hey, you want that lie? Here you go. Facts, okay? We saw the facts. The facts according to Scripture. It don't matter if you want to accept that or believe it. You're going to accept it. You're going to believe it when you stand before him at the great white throne of judgment. Satan has lied to you and you believe a lie because your heart is wicked. And all that you can do to yourself isn't going to change the fact of what God made you. God doesn't make garbage, okay? He made you male or female, okay? And we are to be thankful. I'm thankful that he made me a man. My wife, she's thankful that God made her a woman. But when you say, no, 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 and have contempt for that, you're spitting in God's face. You're falling for, yea, hath God said, and you are your own God. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. For some of you, it's not too late. For some, it is. And uh, I just pray that you consider these things. Because you, you, you know, you talk with, uh, you, or you listen to Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, or, or that Walsh guy. Okay. They use the wisdom of men. Um, uh, Shapiro will sometimes bring in, because he's a Jew, um, he'll bring in some uh, religious aspects of it, but he's Christ rejecting himself, okay? For those of you who haven't gone past that point of no return, 
Please consider these things. And those of you who have gone past that point of no return, consider these things. Because you have shown contempt, great contempt, for the what God has made. And you're going to pay a price for it. So That's going to be it for this video. Like I said, this wasn't that deep. Didn't need to be. Because God is plain. God is plain. It's simple. But yea, hath God said. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, you have questions, there are email addresses that you can reach me. I'll, you know, if you send me an email, it might take me a while to get to it, but um, I'll respond to you sooner or later. Please consider these things.